Today we are going to learn a little bit more about transfer maps and how possibly you could use this for your project. So I'm going to do a couple of simple demos to give you an idea on how transfer maps and normal mapping can really work with your scene. So let's get started. Now the cool thing about transfer maps is it's basically when you model high res or high subdivision geometry and transfer it to a low res shell. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a maybe a simple handle of a weapon. So I'm going to start by using my multi-cut tool and I'm going to add a few divisions, a few edge loops. I'm going to select the edges by double clicking, holding shift and then double clicking. And I'm going to scale those out with the R key. So I'm going to just kind of expand those, expand them out, and there we are. All right, I'll turn on my wireframe on shaded so you guys can see what's going on. Now, I'm going to do something a little interesting here. Let me center my pivot first. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, and I'm going to kind of stack them on top of each other. Now, there's nothing wrong with this modeling process. Um, what I do want to do though is I really or I want to kind of focus on the silhouette or the shape that this is creating for the scene itself. So let me do a couple more here and you can see it creates kind of this like kind of ridged handle shape. Now this isn't really proper modeling technique but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab everything and I'm going to go to my modeling menu and I'm going to do a mesh combine which typically you would know I wouldn't want you to do. You would just leave them separate. But once I do that, I can go ahead and delete the history and I can center my pivot and I have a relatively interesting handle. So what this may go to is later in the, um, excuse me, in the project, it may end up being a handle to an ax, a sword, you name it. But what I want to do is I don't want all these polygons because currently I have quite a bit of subdivisions happening in this scene. So what I'm going to do is use transfer maps and transfer maps is pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and create a cylinder of a like size and by like size I mean it's just going to almost fit right on top of that shell that we've just created. So I'm going to keep it pretty tight here. And what I like to do is I, I like to add a few subdivisions. So maybe two or three, Oops, hit one there. There we go. And that's just gonna give me a little bit more real estate to work with. Now, the trick with these is they have to be almost right on top of each other. So I'm gonna get very close here and kind of gauge where I should have it. And that's looking pretty good. And we'll, we'll move forward with this. So I have a high poly and a low poly. And actually before I get too involved in this, I should name that high poly. So I'm gonna just click in my channel box and grab the other one, deselect it. I'll call this low. And naming those will be very beneficial later on. Now, once you have this, you're gonna go to modeling, rendering, and you're gonna go to lighting and shading and go to your transfer maps. Now transfer maps is really great. It walks you through it. The target mesh is going to be this low res mesh. So I would select that target mesh, which you can see right here, and I will add the selected mesh. The source mesh will be the, get it, the ridged mesh. So I'll hit the add selected or high poly shape to there. Now I also like to go ahead and put on my envelope. And what this envelope does is it allows me to encompass all the gray areas within this searchable area. So I'm going to go maybe to two. Let's see if that will work. Nope, a little bit more, maybe 2.5, 2.4. Have a little sticking out right there. So 2.5 almost, 2.7. There we go. So you want to get it as close as possible. When you have that done, simply walk through the steps. Make sure you have a normal map pushed or selected. Uh, I like to put it somewhere where I can easily find it. Then what I do is go to the Maya common output and I set a relatively nice pixel number here. So 1024 by 1024, I could use 512 by 512. 
I could use 2048 by 2048. And uh, I use world space and a sampling quality of high. This is production quality. So when you're first testing these maps, it's sometimes good to use preview because it will go quicker. I'm pretty confident that this will work. And once you have that, you're ready to go. But let's before we start with that, let's kind of look where this is going to transfer to. So when you create things and you create 3D meshes, every mesh you create has a UV. And we didn't really talk about UVs yet, but we'll talk about them in further detail in the next few weeks. The UV editor, if you look at it, has a lot of basically unwrapped shapes. So it's kind of like somebody took your shape and steamrolled over it. And the trick with this shape is that whatever content we're going to take from the high poly will show up on the UV mesh of the low poly. So it will be in this shape. So for instance, if I grab this shell here, and I'm gonna spread this out just slightly, all that ridged content will show up ridged in here in our normal map. So that's good to know. So I'm gonna hop back to transfer maps, and I'm actually gonna to go to advanced options, and it, I have it set to bake inside then outside the envelope. You can change this around. There's a lot of other options like closest to the envelope. Uh, we can try that the next round we do this. But if I go ahead and hit bake and close, it's gonna take some time if you see here at the bottom left of my screen. And what's happening is it's calculating all the data from the high resolution model. And it's taking the data from the high resolution model and it's transferring it as not geometry, but actually as a texture. And these textures are 3D bump maps referred to as normal maps. Normal maps do not actually change the geometry, but project that high res geometry onto the lower res shell, which in our case right here is kind of the peachy pink shell of geometry that you see. And this process, again, when you're baking at a higher resolution does take a bit of time. So you have to have some patience and you may have to do this a few times before you get the result to be actually right. What's great about this is this allows us to use lower res geometry in real time game engines and interactive situations. By having these interactive situations have smaller geometry, but still have the quality and the appearance of highly detailed modeling, we have the ability to create some pretty awesome final products. In addition, these normal maps also react to light. So it will give the illusion that shadows are being projected within the crevices of the ridges that we have created here on this tube. So all your normal maps will not bake immediately correct the first time. There are some stipulations. And for your first project, part one and two, you may not be able to get this to work for those submissions. So my suggestion for you on that part one and two submission is to just go ahead and model the high polygon version. And then when we learn how to texture in further detail, we can go back and start baking transfer maps to make it work more effectively and efficiently in your game engine. So please keep that in mind as you move forward. So I'm gonna move this to the side and Again, this is my old one, and it doesn't look like much has happened. But if I hit six on my keyboard, what you'll actually notice is it's projecting that texture. And I don't have any models here. It, I, you can see the subdivisions are not the same, but this is a normal map, and this is really awesome. It bakes pretty quickly. I can go ahead and quickly add a light to show you what it will do. So let me add a light here and hit seven on my keyboard. Can you see how it's reacting to the light? Isn't that really awesome? It reacts very similar to the original high density model. Go back to number six on my keyboard here. So six will show you shading, or excuse me, textures. Five will show you shading, and four will go to wireframe, and then one, two, and three, we know do the smooth mesh. So what happened here is it created a bump map in the form of a normal. And if I go ahead and open this normal, let's go ahead and view it. Let's see if I can get it to pop up here. It placed that normal into the shell of my object, which is really, really nice. So now I have the ability to render quicker 
for this object. So that is the creation of a normal map on a very simple stage. You can utilize this when you sculpt scratches, when you use, again, the mesh tool, imprint tool. All of these are great techniques to work with. So hopefully this gives you a little clearer understanding. What I do want you to get out of this video is this is a technique that may not happen for your first two submissions. You may want to incorporate this later down the road when you make your textures. Uh, so again, if you turn in something similar to this for the first submission, obviously I wouldn't combine them, but something like that versus something like this, it's still acceptable. I, what, what I'll tell you in your critique though is, hey, make sure you, you know, try normal mapping later on on that and I'll require that for you down the road. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. I'll see you next time.